This tutorial provides a basic description of what is known as a haunch on high girder bridges. Let's begin with the definition of a haunch, which is a buildup above the top flange of a girder on which the deck slab is supported. And of course, this buildup in most cases uh, happens to be in concrete. You could also say that the haunch is a physical distance between the top of girder and underside of the deck slab. On steel girder bridges, this space is also referred to as a fillet. The main purpose of a haunch is to provide a means to achieve geometric compatibility between the deck slab and the girders. And this allows us to have a constant thickness road weight deck. In the cross section view, you'll notice that the deck slab has a transfer slope to it. However, the top of the girder flange is level. Similarly, in the elevation view, the deck slab follows a relatively flat profile in this case, whereas the girder has a cambered shape to it, and thereby there being this gap between the top flange and the underside of the deck. So a haunch is used to fill in that gap and achieve that geometric compatibility. And we're able to do so by varying the geometry of the haunch longitudinally and transversely along the top flange. So in the cross section, you'll notice that the haunch bottom surface is level, just like the gutter top flange, whereas the top surface of the haunch follows an inclined geometry to mimic the inclination of the deck slab. And similarly, longitudinally, the thickness of the haunch would vary to fill in the necessary gap. And this prevents us from having to thicken the entire deck slab, adding a significant amount of redundant and unsustainable material. Instead, thanks to the haunches, the additional material is only restricted to the buildup on top of the flanges. Let's look into how haunch considerations differ depending upon the type of girder, either pre-stressed concrete or steel girders. So for this, I've got concrete girders on the left and steel girders on the right. And just looking at the first visual, we're showing a crest roadway curve. Let's begin with the steel girders first. In steel girders, we know that we have the ability to build in the geometry of the vertical profile into the girder itself. And so because of that, you end up with a fairly uniform haunch along the length of the entire girder. You still need a certain thickness of haunch to account for the transverse cross slope and any geometry variations from fabrication and construction tolerances. In general, for steel girder bridges, we assume a maximum haunch height of 50 millimeters measured at the center line of the girder. The contractor would need about half an inch minimum thickness of haunch to account for construction tolerances. And if you have a zero cross slope, and depending upon the height of your shear start connectors, you may be able to get away with a haunch of as low as half an inch on steel plate girder bridges. In contrast, for precast concrete girders, because we don't have the ability to build in the profile of the roadway within the girder, there is a greater variability in the haunch thickness along the length of the girder compared to steel plate girders. So in this situation, we see that the curvature of the girder, which is under deflection from self-weight and the weight of the concrete deck on top of it, is milder than the curvature of the vertical curve. And therefore, the minimum haunch occurs at the girder ends, while the maximum haunch thickness occurs at mid-span. Whereas in the case of steel plate girders, we had a generally uniform haunch thickness over the entire length. So this would be a difference in the haunch geometry between concrete and steel girders. Similarly, when you look at the situation in the figure on the bottom, this is where the curvature of the girder is sharper than the curvature of the roadway profile. And because of that geometry, the minimum haunch thickness occurs at mid-span, while at the girder ends is where you get the maximum haunch thickness. While on the steel girder side, in a similar situation, what we'll find is that you have a relatively uniform haunch thickness over the entire length, 
again because of the ability to cut in the profile of the roadway within the girder itself. Okay, and by the way, I've mentioned camber several times in this tutorial. And for those of you who don't have a background on camber, there is a tutorial on camber that's available on our YouTube channel that I would encourage you to go and watch. In terms of the maximum and minimum dimensions of the Hans thickness for pre-stressed concrete girders, the maximum thickness uh, could be as high as about four and a half inches, especially when partial depth precast panels are used. On the other hand, the minimum dimension could be as low as half an inch at the edge of the flange to allow for construction tolerances. So you can see that the variability between the maximum and minimum in the case of concrete girders is much higher compared to steel girders. So a greater allowance needs to be accounted for during the design of concrete girders with regard to the haunch height and weight.